So, so you think you're human. There's seven billion people on this planet. You know how many microbes there are? Five non-million. Five non-million. That's the number of stars in the universe multiplied by five million. That's a lot of bacteria. And they're everywhere. They're on this floor, they're in your kitchen sink, they're on your chair, they're on your coffee cup. And yes, they're on you. You harbor a hundred trillion bacteria in and on your body right now. That's only a thousand times the number of individuals on this planet. And if you look at it in terms of cells, you are outnumbered 10 to 1. You are not human. You are a walking bacterial colony. <laughs> we have several commensal floras, or commensal microbiotas, as we call them. You have your skin flora, your oral flora, your genital flora, and most famously, your gut flora. And these floras are numerous, but they're good for you. They help you digest your food, they protect you against pathogens, they provide you with essential nutrients such as vitamins, and they train your immune system. And most importantly, if something goes wrong with your flora, something is wrong with you. So we scientists, we've, in the last few years, we've discovered new techniques to study the, the gut flora or the gut microbiome at great resolution. And so we start off from a sample from, from your flora, we extract all the microbes, we extract all the DNA from these microbes, we throw that into one of those sequencing devices, and we learn something about that ecosystem, because it's an ecosystem. We learn what microbes live there, and we learn what these microbes can do, what genes they have in their collective genome. And we've learned that our microbiome, so the collective genome, contains a hundred times more genes than we have. We have a second genome active in and on our bodies. And we've learned that you can sort of classify the, glut, the gut flora into three kinds, three corners of ecosystem space. And we've called them enterotypes. And so to, to give you a better feeling what these enterotypes are, I often make the, 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 the what's the word? <laughs> the comparison, thank you, uh, with an ecosystem, right? With a forest. You have tropical forests. You have temperate forests, you have bamboo forests. They're all forests, but you have different species living together and functioning as a unit. You have constellations that work optimally, and that's what I think these constellations in your gut flower are like. And so the environment that these bacteria live in, they determine these constellations, it seems. And the environment in the gut is the food that you eat. And so people have discovered that the, the people that have more fat in their food or more protein in their food or more carb carbohydrate in their food, they have different gut compositions. And that's important because more and more diseases are linked to disturbances of your gut flora. Diarrhea, diabetes, obesity, atherosclerosis, colitis, Crohn's disease, even autism all have been associated with disturbed gut floras. And it's not merely associations. Bad gut floras can actually cause disease. If you take the flora of an obese mouse and you put it into a germ-free mice, so one that doesn't have a flora, that germ-free mouse becomes obese. So we're thinking, right? So we, we, can, we, can, we can learn something from this flora about your personal health. We're moving towards diagnosing people on the contents of your gut. And so this, this is being done, for example, for diabetes or for colon cancer. But we can do this in everyday life. We can go towards a long life, lifelong health monitoring of your gut flora 
from the obvious material. And when I mean lifelong, I mean lifelong. Because your gut flora is seeded at birth. Babies are born sterile. And it's only when they get born, they are inoculated by the flora of the mother. The skin flora, the vaginal flora, the fecal flora. That's when it happens, that moment. And so messing with the flora in early life can have serious consequences. And we're starting to understand more and more how serious these consequences can be. Babies that are born by C-section have different floras than babies that are born vaginally. Babies that have been breastfed have different floras than babies that have been formula fed. We don't really know which one is better. We just see the differences at the moment. But we know that babies, or, or for example, in, again from mouse experience, mouse, mice that have had low dosage of, of antibiotics at very early age at the, have a disturbed flora at adulthood and they become obese. And low dosages of antibiotics at early age has been linked to things like asthma. So we have to start thinking and be very careful about the usage of antibiotics. I'm not pleading against antibiotics, but we should be very careful. Also, in adults, this matters. If you get a normal dose of broad-spectrum antibiotics, some of you will recover after a few weeks. The gut flora will recover after a few weeks. Some of you, for some of you, it'll take months. For some of you, it could take over a year for your gut flora to become normal or what it was again. Right? And some of the people, they never recover. They have permanently altered their gut flora. Again, there's so many unknowns in our field. We don't really know what the effects of this are, but we are just seeing that the consequences are important. And so we can also think of modulating your flora, resetting your flora. Right? There's now a new thing called fecal. Well, it's not a new thing, actually. It's, it's pretty old. Bedouins have used it for ages. But fecal, fecal transfer, transplanting a flora of a healthy individual into a diseased individual actually seems to work as a therapy in some diseases. And it's not only disease. The gut flora influences behavior, influences brain development. Experiments in mice, in mice are now showing that anxiety behavior or explorative behavior of mice is determined by what flora they have. In Drosophila, the flora has shown to be influencing mating behavior, sexual preference. So, think about it. Or, is it you who is thinking? So, take home messages. I only have two. One is, take care of your friends. But the second one is, you never have to feel lonely ever again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>